So dark pools are private exchange that mainly private exchange that do not publicly display their orders. So basically in traditional financial markets, we have limit order book. You can see buyers and sellers intentions, the price of orders as well. But in dark pools, we don't see the price and quantities before trading. So we have no pre-trade transparency. Dark trading prevalence increased significantly. So before 2005, in the US, it was about approximately 45%. And it was mainly used for block trading. So block trading simply means that traders trade huge amount of shares. Okay? But what happened is that uh, after 2005, we see that dark trading proportion increased significantly. In 2013, it was about 13 to 15%. But now it is about 40%. Effectively, four out of ten shares are now trading off exchange venues in the U.S. And during COVID-19, we see some all-time highs as well at about 42, 42, 43, and at some point 46 percent. So the existing literature mainly focuses on how dark trading impact market quality. So we we know that we have different theories, we have different empirical results, which says that dark trading can positively or negatively impact market quality. But what I'm interested in mainly is not how dark trading impact market quality, but how dark trading impact corporate policies through market quality. So we have two papers. In the first one, we are interested in how dark trading impact corporate cash holdings. And we find that dark trading reduce corporate cash holdings. So managers hold lower cash when their shares are more exposed to dark trading. And at the same time, we have another paper which we show that dark trading impact managerial learning from financial markets, so it's, which is called investment to price sensitivity in the literature. But especially for the second paper, we find non-linear relationship, which means that up to some point, based on our funding, it's about 25%, dark trading is positive for managerial learning, but after that, it, it hurts managerial learning. Data we got, it's, it's US-based data, we got the daily trade and court data, which includes trades executing off-exchange, which we say dark, and exchange venues. We get data from that database, basically. And to understand the result, economic channels, let me put it that way, we basically look how dark trading impact market quality in lit market, in traditional exchange, and how traditional exchange impact corporate policies. So kind of traditional exchange are bridge for us for to kind of link dark trading to corporate cash policy and managerial learning. We have huge regulatory discussions around dark trading. So when we see that dark trading increase, regulators initially say that, okay, so there can be some level that dark trading may hurt market quality. And some empirical papers indeed find consistent result with that. And Motivated with that, for instance, the, the uh, European the ESMA include MIFID II, which basically in, in introduced restrictions on dark trading. But what we see is that it didn't give us what we are looking for. We see that exchange, dark trading venue volume goes down, but it didn't go to traditional markets necessarily. Then, especially after Brexit, UK announced that they will perhaps revoke that restrictions. And France re recently also announced that they plan to revoke it. So there's a huge demand, huge discussion, debate around whether we should have dark trading or we should have restrictions on dark trading or not. So our basically study says that we should not look, on, look at market quality only. We need to think about what happens at the corporate side to, to implement or not to implement that restriction. That's really important too.